For hundreds of years, the Roman legions wore helmets connected in a continuous line of evolution, adopting to the changing conditions of the battlefield. The Monte Fortino added cheek pieces to the earliest pot helmets. The Colus added a visor to protect from a downward cut, which were followed by the iconic Gallic and Italic imperial helms. And finally, cheap mass-produced ridge helms were among the last used in the later days of the Western Roman Empire. But throughout this time, there were alternatives and anomalies that were used throughout this period that were often unrelated to the evolution of the standard issue legionary helm of their day. Here are a few examples. During much of the Roman Republic, her citizen soldiers were obliged to supply their own equipment, and although the Monte Fortino helmet was by far the most widely used, several Greek-influenced helmets were also commonly used. From the 6th century BC to the 1st century AD, the style known as the Etrusco-Corinthian or Italio-Corinthian helmet was commonly used first by wealthy Roman rank-and-file troops, and eventually became a helmet almost exclusively worn by officers. It was a corruption unique to Italy, of the famous Greek Corinthian helmet, designed to be worn on the top of the head to mimic the look of the original push back on the head when not in action. Another example of Greek-influenced helmet, favored by officers until the first century AD, is the Attic type. Some variations of these helmets could be very elaborate, and as an artistic motif, the Attic helmet long outlasted other contemporary helmet types, being used to impart an archaic look to depictions of generals, emperors, and Praetorians throughout the Hellenistic and Roman periods. As such, the form of the Attic helmet has become part of the popular image of a Roman officer as found in art from the Renaissance onwards up until modern-day Hollywood productions. During the 2nd century BC, a Greek Boeotian helmet was used in Italy and influenced the design of a hybrid helmet frequently displayed in artwork from the time. Although its use was far shorter than either the Italo-Corinthian or Attic helmet, in response to a great question on my last video I did on Roman helmets, asking why did some Romans wear wolf pelts over their helmets? In early Republican Rome, the Velites or skirmishers, typically the younger, poorer citizen soldiers, would wear wolf skins as a mark of bravery, as their job was running up to the enemy ranks and chucking javelins at them. In the later Republic and Empire, wolf pelts and other skins, such as lion, tigers, and bears, would be typically be worn by a standard bearer, which was an esteemed veteran. At this point, it became a very formalized distinction. As opposed, early on, it was a stylistic choice, mostly used by the younger men, in contrast to veterans. Another distinctive accessory was a sideways crest, typically made from dyed horsehair or feathers worn by centurions. The sideways crest made the centurion easily visible to his century of 80 legionaries on the chaotic field of battle, a forwards crest was worn by regular legionaries, typically only while on parade. Many infantrymen began equipping themselves with heavy cavalry helmets from around 200 AD, known to historians as the Niederbieber helmet, after the location of an early find. Examples have been found made from brass, iron, bronze, or a combination of these metals, and was one of the last high-quality helmets designs used in the later Western Roman Empire. It is interesting to note the hefty neck guard and the closing of the ear cutouts when compared to imperial helms. During Rome's many centuries, there has been undoubtedly a vast array of helmet designs, especially among Roman cavalry helmets. There have been many found with remarkable looking faceplates, most likely used while on parade. This has been Epimetheus. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the less iconic and a few obscure Roman helmets. Don't forget to smash the like button, sub, hit the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video, and comment on which of these helmets is your favorite. Which would you like to wear in a battle? And please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Starting at just a dollar a month, you can pitch in and help me out with the cost of running this channel. Or by buying an awesome shirt or mug I designed at the Teespring store, and that will also help me grow the channel more.